Hello guys, welcome to Cloud Tech. So in today's video, we are going to discuss top 10 mistakes that even experienced Java developers make while coding. We are going to understand those mistakes and we are going to understand the best practices to follow to correct those problems. So let's get to the first thing, which is releasing the resource. So if you see, there's a try block and there's a catch block. And in the try block, we have a buffer reader. So we used the buffer reader, but we haven't closed it. So the nice way to do this is use try with resource. So you can use try and you can specify the resource that you want to use it. So whatever resource you specify here will be closed once the logic is executed. So this feature was introduced in Java 7 where you don't have to explicitly close the resource in your finally block. It happens automatically. Uh, so let's move to the next thing, which is a break statement. While writing switch cases, here you can see at line number seven, we have case one. And once the case one logic is completed, what we do, we haven't added the break statement. So what this will do, once the case one is executed, this will also execute case two. Similarly, it will keep on executing other cases. What is the best practice that we have to follow is we have to add break statement after each case. So for example, when case one is executed, and the logic within case one will be executed and break will be triggered and hence it won't execute rest of the case statements in the switch case block. So you have to add break statement. Let's move to the third question, string concatenation. So whenever concatenation comes into picture, you have to make sure you don't use string objects because for every concatenation, string creates a new object. If you see, there is a result and within for loop, I am doing concatenation. So this will keep on concatenating string and for each concatenation, a new string object will be created. So this is an inefficient way of concatenating. What have what you have to do? You have to use either string buffer or string builder. So if you look here for concatenation, I'm using string builder and I'm going to use append method. So this creates only one object and it will append the value to the same object. So this is the efficient way of string concatenation. Let's move to the next question, which is incorrect exception handling. If you see, this is the incorrect way of handling exception where you have a try block and then you have a catch block. Within catch block, catch block is empty. So you handle the exception, but you haven't written the logic to what to do when exception occur. So the correct way of handling is you have to handle the exception and you have to add proper logic in your catch block and you have to add the proper log statement in your catch block. So this way, the uh, exception will be returned to your log file and other developers can go to the log file and understand what happened and why the file wasn't found. Let's move to the next question, which is incorrect string comparison. So generally what happens uh, you have two strings, string one and string two. Both of them have value hello. So these are two different string objects. And what developers do, they compare these string objects using equal to equal to operator, thinking that if I use equal to equal to operator, two objects will be compared and true will be written. But that is not the case. Equal to equal to just compares your references. It does not compare the value of the string object. So the right way to do this is whenever you have string object, you have to use equals method rather than equal to equal to operator. So your equals method actually goes and compares the value of the string object rather than the reference of the string object. So the right way to do is use equals method rather than equal to equal to operator. So the next thing is about uh, hash code and equals. Uh, if you see, <coughs> we have two methods. Uh, one is hash code and one is equals and constant value is returned from my hash code and from my equals method but this is incorrect way of implementing your hash code and equals uh, what is the correct way of implementing hash code and equals the correct way is using uh, fields or combination of fields in your hash code and equals method so if you see instead of hard coded i have used objects dot hash name and age similarly for equals method, I have to use age and name rather than using constant value. You can write the logic as per your business functionality. So that is my question number six. 
let's move to question number seven. Here, uh, if you see incorrect naming convention, uh, my class is not correctly named. Uh, if you see here, I is small. It should be uh, capital I. Naming N should be capital and C should be capital. And even the variable is not correctly named. My variable name. So it should be my variable name. You have to follow consistent variable names in your project. So that is my best practice number seven. Trade safety. This is very important. If you see uh, incorrect increment, what is happening here? I have a counter <coughs> and I am doing counter plus plus. So this is not the right way of incrementing counter. What you have to do is whenever you are incrementing, uh, if two threads call the same method at the same time, what will happen? The value of counter will be corrupted. So in that case, you have to use synchronized keyword. So this will ensure that only one thread calls this method and counter is incremented correctly. There is one more way of uh, achieving this and that is by using atomic integer. You can use atomic integer which uh, provides support for concurrent access to integer object. So that is my best practice number eight. Uh, let's move to best practice number nine. If you see here, I have a string name. This is my uh, null reference. And then I'm trying to access length of that null reference. Uh, this will result in a uh, null pointer exception. What is the correct way? <coughs> correct way is using, uh, first you have to check if the object is null and then you have to call the length method on it. So this is the right way. And even the better way is using optional. So optional is introduced in Java 8. Uh, you can either go for this method or you can go for optional. Optional provides uh, methods like is present or uh, is not present. In that case, you can check if the value is present, then you can go and get the value from your optional object. So that is my problem number nine. Let's move to the last problem. Whenever you want to represent your currency uh, object, uh, then most of the people use either double or float. Don't use double for currency or money representation in your project. Uh, instead of uh, Instead of double or float, go for big decimal. Big decimal provides uh, better precision and provides a lot of inbuilt methods that you can use to represent money in your project. So these are uh, top 10 best practices that you can follow in your project.